Town Tools Media, hashtag TO Media, hashtag TO Podcast, hashtag Too Many Hashtags, keep hashtagging it out. And we're back, man. Jay Shep, y'all already know what's going on, man. Y'all know the vibes. And today, we're here on a, on a different level today. Um, most of the times, recently, we've been having a lot of musicians on, which this person is. For sure, she is a singer. But, you know, we have acting in the building. We have the theater arts, we have a collective, we have what I would call the all around creative badass. I don't know if you would agree with me or not. I like that. See? And so today, everybody, we have Miss Gina, Naomi, and I don't want to pronounce it Bayes or? Baez, like Baez. Joe Baez. Bias. Okay, cool. I hate butchering people's last names. That's why I, like, I, I had to ask bias. Okay, so yeah. Me bias. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Um, I'm over here, uh, located in Houston, Texas. I know you're in uh, New York right now. I think my birth. Yes, New York. Right. So long ways apart from Texas to New York, but we're making it happen. We're making yes, it happen. We are. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So first off, I want to start off and say, um, looking over the stuff you've done and looking over some of the things you've done on um, your journey on social media, you really have an interesting story to me. But I want to take it back to the beginning. I want to start, um, where are you originally from and how did you even get into acting and singing? Well, I'm originally actually from New York, right outside of New York City, um, a town called Rockville Center on Long Island. And that's where I was born and grew up and went to school and everything. Um, and I kind of just got the acting bug and music bug from a really young age. Um, I think I was about like four or five when um, I was introduced to movies like um, The Wizard of Oz and Funny Girl with Barbra Streisand. Mm -hmm. And just musical movies were my life. Like I loved them so much. And that's where I, you know, got into like the singing thing. And that's what I wanted to do. All of a sudden I wanted to sing. And I started doing a lot of community theater on Long Island and just kind of kept doing that throughout my entire childhood. For sure, for sure. So we got the, we got the bug quick. Um, was it something that your people pushed for? Or is it just something that you felt like it was just in you? Oh, it definitely was something in me. I mean, my parents were not artists or actors or anything like that. Um, and I kind of was finding everything out like on my own as a kid and, you know, like making them drive me to auditions and rehearsals and all that. Um, so it definitely was me like kind of like taking the wheel <laughs> and um, making it happen. No, nah, that's great. That's great. That's great. And then obviously, you know, you go from the Long Island theaters, you know, you go from having the bug as a kid, then it hits, you know, everything, I feel like it starts probably hitting a little, you know, an up, a up, a upward area in the career. Cause I see on here, like got the Netflix credits, you got, you know, recently she's got to have it. I see Orange, the new black, I see the big C, you know, talk to me well about that first, what what when did you realize like you had that first breakthrough moment like oh I can really make it out here bro I can really do this? Wow. Um. Well, I have to say the first professional job that I actually did was in sixth grade. Um. I was a part of the angel chorus at in a Christmas Carol at Madison Square Garden, hmm. and that was like my first like professional experience where I got to like just. I mean, I was performing at MSG and in, in front of like thousands of people every night. And, um, but I also got to watch like all the professionals do what they were doing as adults. And I was like, I think I can do this. This is what I want to do. Um, so that's when I knew like I had to just keep going. And then I guess my first, um, the first TV thing that I booked was Orange is the New Black. Mm. And that's, and that was, you know, just, it kind of brought both worlds for me um, together, singing and also acting. And that was the first, I guess, time that I was like, okay, I can keep going and I can make this a career. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because definitely when I saw Orange is the New Black, I said, okay, I've watched it. Okay. 
She got to have it. I said, okay, I'll watch that. I was like, oh, okay, we got to. I said, okay, we got somebody over here. She's doing her thing. She's doing her thing. <laughs> and so we got the acting side for sure, you know, that, you, that you've got going on and everything like that. And, but we also, you know, we, we said the music, you know what I'm saying? We, we talked about your music, and I know you have a new single that just dropped. Do. Talk to us about this new. My bad, my bad. Talk to us about this new single you just. No, dropped. don't. So the new single I just dropped was that um is actually called Pinata. Pinata. And this song is super personal to me. I have to say it's definitely like really from the heart. Um, and it's about, I guess, feeling like you're getting beaten down so many times maybe, and you feel like you can't fight back, but like you don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. um, so it's almost like you're feeling like a pinata <laughs> yourself. Right. Um, so it's just about those times when like you're, you're feeling like beaten down a lot and what you do with that and how you don't break though, or at least that's what I try to emote through the song is that you don't break down though like a pinata would um, at the end of the party or whatever, but you keep going and stay strong. Nah, I feel that. I think that's a that's definitely good because I feel like sometimes in the industry that we're in, it was entertainment, but also in just, just the regular people's lives in general, you know, you can feel like, you know, you got bills, you got real life situations, you got relationships, you got family, you have all these different things that can sometimes you know, be a burden and not in a bad way, but like, you know, can they can be down on you, they can weigh down on you. Sometimes you can feel like that. With a song like Piana, Piñata, I definitely gave it a listen. I was like, oh, okay, I see where she's coming from with the song. So I, I want to say congratulations on that single, but I know that's, I know that's just a single and I know we have something coming towards that. I don't, you know, we're going to say that for the end. We're going to say that for the okay. end. Okay. And so that's a surprise for the end. But what is your creative process like when you're in the studio or when you're making music? Is it just whatever comes to you? Do you like write out topics for yourself or how is that process? Well, it's always different for me, but I feel like it definitely is whatever comes to me in the moment. But it's also about inspiration a lot of the time. I mean, I am extremely inspired by Taylor Swift, mm -hmm. um, especially over the pandemic. Um, I just love like all her those two new albums that she that she released over the pandemic, and I just love like how more they just feel they just felt more raw and more real. And I kind of just wanted to get that way a little bit more um, into like the raw feelings and the real feelings that I was going through but also hopefully like people would relate to it in a way. Um, but I always start with lyrics first, which I know a lot of people don't. They usually start with like a beat or um, chords or something. Um, but I just, lyrics are my number one for me personally. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I can draw from that like and come up with like melodies and top lines and stuff. No, that's good. And that's actually interesting because normally you would hear like someone like, I need the beat before I can I can feel inspired by the words. But you know, you taking the words, you're actually layering that up with a beat. So it's kind of like you're matching the poetry with the instrument, which is which is a great concept. But I think it's funny because so to some that might seem a little backwards, you know. Yeah. Definitely. But, they, you know, everybody's got their process. And, you know, that process works for you. We definitely worked on that song. I will say that. And so there's a question that I do ask everybody on this show. So I do have to ask you this. So um, from the brief time we've talked and from the time I've looked over your stuff, we forgot, first of all, Madison Square Garden, the sixth grade, amazing. We've got Long Island Theater, shout out to them. We got Orange the New Black. We got new, we got Pinata, new single on the way with another surprise that we're not gonna tell everybody just yet. We're gonna let them uh, wait to the end for the surprise. We have all these things. And so the, the motto of my show is the journey and the destination. So this question I ask everybody is which one do you think is more important to you? Is it the journey that you've been on to get to where you're at? Or is it the destination that you're trying to go to? 
I think I have to say it's the destination for me mm -hmm. because I have so many goals and like I don't I oh man that's hard because like <laughs> it is about the journey too <laughs> can I pick both no um, okay, no, can but, no. I think both. I think I have to say destination though because I'm a big like person about like don't give up and keep going and you'll get there kind of ideal so I have to say destination okay I understand I understand so the destination both I, I'll say it like this but every someone comes on the show I'm like both of these answers can be right you know what I'm saying when you want to pick both I will I can't let you out easy though you got to pick one I can't just let you out easy but nah the destination is definitely important I, I understand why you said your answer but I want to let you know you do have a journey that I feel like a lot of people if you were to explain it to them, which I want you to in a second, they can relate to. So you had something that stuck out about your story that um, hit personal for me. So you um, are a two-time thyroid cancer survivor. And my mother had thyroid. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I want you to, if you don't mind, um, I know you've been documenting this journey through social media. If you can explain to the people the journey that you've gone through with that and then how you've been able to stay positive and overcome it. Definitely. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. I am a two-time cancer survivor. I actually had Hodgkin's lymphoma mm -hmm. when I was uh, 13 and then went into remission for that. Gotcha. And then um, I most recently had a thyroid cancer diagnosis that I have thank God I'm in mission for that too mm -hmm. um so it's not the sorry I know it's confusing because but it is two separate that. ones so it was the yeah. lymphoma first lot. and then the thyroid second okay gotcha yeah um so yeah like I I had Hodgkin's lymphoma at 13 um went through chemotherapy radiation all that and I think that's one of the real reasons to this day that I am still pursuing acting and singing and everything that makes me happy and like my passion because when you go through something like that, it's so young, you feel like there's not, like you, you kind of like lose your childhood in a sense. Right. And you lose, you, you have a different outlook on life like you're like this is you you get one life this is your life and you have to do what makes you happy and do what you love um so i always like vowed to myself like i'm gonna do what makes me happy um for the rest of my life and just keep going and stay strong if i can get through cancer i can get through anything i think um <laughs> so that was kind of my journey from going through cancer and then like I went to school for musical theater and singing and everything um and then now here I am like still pursuing the uh, Broadway and theater and television and acting and everything and and singing and songwriting and uh yeah I had a my neck just kept getting more and more swollen mm -hmm. and they told me that I had thyroid nodules that were, they checked them every month. Um, no, not every month. I'm so sorry. Every year. And they told me, oh, they're fine. They're fine. Like they're benign. There's no cancer. Like they're just there. That's normal. Um, but it got to the point where I got, um, the, my neck was so swollen that I didn't know what to do anymore. Like I had to wear turtlenecks all the time. It was, um, a vanity thing in a way as well um and i knew that i wanted to get my thyroid removed because of that but everyone kept telling me well you won't be able to sing again or you might not be able to sing again because it'll affect your vocal cords right so it was just like a really hard time um about like two years of me going back and forth if i should get the surgery or not and the doctors would be like, oh, but it's fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with it. You should just leave it there. Like, you might not be able to use your voice again. And it was just like weighing those options a lot. Um, but 
I don't know why, but just in me, I knew that I had to do it. Um, and I finally got the surgery. I found a surgeon that I trusted and I was like, well, this is it. Like, I'm just going to get it out and just pray that I can sing and use my voice again afterwards. And the surgery went great and they took it out and I did my vocal therapy and got to sing again. And thank God. Um, but then thank God I got it out because it was cancer. It ended up being cancer. Um, and I don't, I don't know. It was just like this intuition that was in me to get it out. And I'm just thankful to this day that I did. And, um, now I am like in remission. They're sure that they got it all. And I just get it checked every couple months, but going through all that and, <laughs> um, after having cancer the first time, it, it would definitely was really scary. And I decided to uh, document it all on TikTok because I couldn't find anyone who was a singer or an actor who had gone through this that has actually like told their story really or had like I had no information or I couldn't really find anyone that was a singer that was going through this process. Um, so I thought if maybe I could help someone who might get this scary news down the line or even going through the same thing as me now. Um, and I've actually found like this whole community <laughs> on TikTok now of just performers and just and just not even just performers, just um, people mm -hmm. in general that are going through this. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So it's great to connect with people on there as well and to show them that journey. And yeah, that's and, a lot. <laughs> yeah, it is. But guess what? See, that is the pure definition of what we call of the here, the journeys greater than the destination. In this yeah. respect, your destination when you're in with the answer you chose is 100% correct. But we literally have goodies for our brand to say journey of a destination, and that yeah. and that symbolizes that because what you know is on your your grind and your story you didn't stop you, you're continuing to grow, be who you are, become this amazing star, actor, singer. And so, you're doing the thing. So, over here, we just want to say, you know, keep going, keep doing everything. You got God on your side. And, if you believe in God, you know, you got him on your side doing what you need to do. And so what we are about to get into now, we got two things. We got two things. One, I was kept telling you to put off. But we're going to start. We're going to start. We're going to start on the acting side first. We're going to start. Okay. We're going to start with triple threat. Okay. Please let, let everybody know, man, what triple threat is and your, your role and how can they catch you? Let, let them know. Yay. Okay. So Triple Threat is a new feature film that is out right now on Apple TV. And you can also watch it on Amazon video. Um, and it is a film about a Broadway musical starting from the beginning and having the journey mm -hmm. <laughs> um, to Broadway. And um, I play the part of Laura, who is in the musical from the beginning. Um, when they start just in, like, you know, in, in workshops and like rehearsal studios and um, doing the show like off Broadway and then it transferring to Broadway. So it's about that journey, but it's also a journey of three best friends who, you know, write the musical together and work on the musical together and, you know, their trials and tribulations and how, to, and how they got there. See, everybody, I, all I'm going to say, y'all might need to tune into Apple TV and go watch there. Definitely. And, and there's a lot of singing. There's great music. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of singing in it. So it was the best of both worlds again. I got to sing. I got to act. got to dance. got to do it all. And there we go. We got the acting part. So make sure y'all, everybody goes and watch this uh, Triple Threat. And what we need to do also talk about is this EP, man. This EP that's coming out. Yeah. Set to come out. August 5th, am I correct? Yes. There we go. Now, you know me. Well, you know, earlier I kind of messed up. And, and you know, my pronunciations can be wrong sometimes. So <laughs> work with me. Well, how, how we pronounce this EP? So My EP is titled Jimita. And that is... <laughs> That's easy. That's easy. I could have pronounced that. Ah, all right. Go ahead. 
It's entitled Janita. Um, that's my name that my family gave me, like has given me. Um, it means little Gina because mm -hmm. um, I am Latina. So um, that's what my family would call me when I was little. And it's um, an EP written to my younger self in a way. Um, and everything that she went through when she was little, like when I was little, uh, cancer and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was talking about, pinata. Like, yeah, in a way, when I was going through cancer, it felt like I was a pinata in a way. Um, but obviously for the listener, you can, you can take it in so many other ways, not just what my personal, like why I wrote it kind of thing. Um, but yeah, every song is a reflection of, Janita, in a way. So I'm really excited for that EP to drop on August 5th. See, and I'm upset at myself. Like I couldn't, like I couldn't just easily pronounce Janita. I'm <laughs> asking for explanations. Like I'm not from Texas. I'm, I'm, and I know my home, my home is my friend. They're gonna clown me. They're like, all right, come on, shit. But nah, that's good, man. We're gonna make, we're gonna make sure to, uh, I'm gonna make sure to tap into the EP whenever it does drop. August 5th, ironically enough, um, my uh, company and for my people, for my uh, T.O. Nation fans, y'all already know what's going on. We have uh, T.O. Fest, August 6th in Houston, Texas, the DJ battle going on out here. Make sure y'all pull up. The ticks will be in the link, Gina, if you just wanted to come fly, just say, man, you know, you are personally invited. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, Gina, uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. You've been a great guest on the show. You've dropped a lot of gems and a lot of stories. Um, the last thing I am going to ask you to do is um, tell everybody your social media, where they can follow you, where they can keep up with your journey, because you got destinations to go to, but you have a great journey that you've been on. I am Gina Naomi Baez, and you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Gina Naomi Baez. Um, also Twitter at Gina underscore Naomi underscore Baez. And also YouTube. I have a whole YouTube channel and on Spotify, my full name, Gina Naomi Baez. And that's about it. So there we go. And everybody, we're going to make this real short speech to the point. Please follow my personal at King underscore J Ship. Gina, I'm going to tap into your social media after this. We're going to connect. I'll be actually out in New York in September with my team. So okay. maybe you can tell us some great places we can go eat. So, I can definitely tell you a lot of great places. There we go. So make sure you follow my personal IG and then make sure you follow the business accounts, man, at underscore talented ones underscore and at talented underscore ones. So the first one is IG and the second one is Twitter. I'm going to probably drop them down below so it can make life a lot easier. And so, yeah, y'all tap into us. I told you about the event. We're moving out here in Houston. We're traveling with everybody. Y'all can follow us on our journey, man. I appreciate y'all. And Gina, you keep going to your destinations. Okay, I will. Thank uh, you so much for having me. This has been amazing. Uh, no problem. I appreciate you. Hey, everybody, she said it's amazing. She got a verified check, too. So we're winning. There we go. <laughs> and we are gone, man. Appreciate y'all. You're a talented one.